In the last video, we worked with a single sample inside of Bitwig Studio Sampler, and Bitwig Studio Sampler is very basic. There's not a lot of controls, and the interface, the user interface, is very friendly. So we could so easily tell what we were doing, and there weren't like a million different options that we had to open up in order to get what we wanted. So that's both good and bad. It's good in that you can very quickly create a an instrument and start playing it's bad in that you just don't maybe have as many features as you'd want to have so in this video we're going to go to the other end of the spectrum and work with contact which is really a much more advanced sampler but it's still just a sampler all right and that's what you have to be thinking about if you do own and work with contact probably my favorite sampler and the one that i think can get you the craziest results is actually ableton lives sampler I, that's probably my favorite sampler that I've ever worked with. I don't really have access to it anymore. I don't work with Ableton Live um, anymore. So it's uh, I can't go back to it. I can't reminisce. So in order to get some of those same features, I actually have to work here with contact. But that's okay because a sampler is just a sampler. And as long as we can break up those component parts, we can find the wave editor, we can figure out where we need to go to put the root key in, to map out where the sample is going to be, that's all I really need, okay? So if I can break this down, I should have no problem. All right, that's at least the mindset going into this. So we're going to do a couple of examples, and this is gonna be the sound we use for the first example. And this tells us right here on the display that this is a C. And I'm assuming that this is the pitch of C, right? So I could go and I could like use the span or I could use a keyboard to try to make sure that this is perfectly in tune, but I'm just gonna trust it. So I drag and drop this in and I've created my new sampler instrument. Wow, very sexy. This is not what we're used to seeing when we're in contact. But again, this is about sound. And even with the multi-sampled instruments you get from Contact, you really need to judge them with your eyes closed because Contact is just the container. The samples contained within it are what makes one instrument better, you know, quote unquote, better from another, at least to your ear. So to each his own, don't let the interfaces confuse you. This is a fully functional instrument right here. And we can see that many of the keys or actually all of the keys that we can see in view have turned blue. And that means that the sample that we just brought in will play back on all of these keys. Let's find out if it's key tracked or if it's just gonna be playing back in raw mode. Okay, so it's key tracked without us having to do anything. But that's a little bit worrying. How do we know that it's gotten the root key correct? We don't know that at this time. Let's see if we can figure that out. From this display, there's no way of me knowing where it's set the root key to. So I'm gonna have to go into the dreaded backside of contact and for most people when they're like messing around with this they kind of open this up they're like Psh, never mind never doing that again and that was how i reacted to it anyway but we're going to go ahead and really try to break this down make it pretty simple for you i'm even going to go in here and just get rid of this for now okay so where is our root key setting where can i find that i'm going to have to go into the mapping editor okay and the mapping editor is exactly what it sounds like we're mapping out samples onto the keyboard on an X and Y plane. X plane being pitch, Y plane being velocity. And by default, it has gotten this right, but that's only because we're working with uh, something that's pitch was C. If our pitch was, in, was D, we'd have to change this to a D or to an E or to an F or to whatever. And when you're working with something very specific and you're creating a multi-sample instrument, like you're creating a piano, for example, you need to make sure that you get that right for each and every sample you bring in. Otherwise, the whole thing is gonna go to pot. So what's gonna happen is I can now play up and down the keyboard and this little red, you know, small thin rectangle is going to tell us where we are playing. So this is a C2. That's me playing a C3. If for some reason I play a note and it doesn't fall within the range, we're not going to hear anything. And that's true for whether that's velocity or for the actual um, pitch itself. Okay. So with just one instrument, with just one single sample, I should say, this is totally fine. We can just spread this out across the entire keyboard. No worries at all. When we get into multi samples, we're gonna have to spend a lot more time in here. The next thing I'd like to figure out is how do I change the envelope 
Right now, all I have is this gate message. I click, I let go, it shuts off. I click, I let go, it shuts off. This isn't very useful for me. Is it in the wave editor? I would kind of think that's where it should be, but I'm not seeing an envelope option here at all. And that's because this is a very sophisticated wave editor really designed for you to edit the sample. In our case, we're pretty lucky. We don't need to change the start of the endpoint. It's pretty much good to go already. So I need to go back out of here and figure out how do I change the ADSR? And the way to do that is not really straightforward to people, at least not at first. If you notice though, every time I hit a key, we're seeing some kind of movement here with the volume. And around a lot of these controls, we see this little orange dot. Any control that gives you a little orange dot at the top is something that you can modulate, but you're going to have to set that up manually. You're asking, why is this moving right now? And that's because by default, it actually does have velocity sensitivity going to it. Okay, so since my velocity is pretty low, it's dropping it down there. If I hit it really low, you'll see it goes uh, further away. If I hit it really hard, it stays right there. But I want to have more control than just a gate message. And to do that, I'm going to right click, choose envelopes, and I'm going to create an ADSR. In this case, we have an ADH with the hold SR, but same thing. So now I have a lot more control over this guy. And so let's just set something up simple like what we had before. Let's put no attack and just add a lengthier release. But wait a minute. Oh crap, we run into this problem again. If I go up the keyboard, it's doing the classic resample thing where the higher the pitch, the shorter the sample. That's not what I want. And the whole point of us using contact is so we can kind of get around that and do something creative with it. So this little option right here, source, this is probably my favorite part of contact. All these different algorithms for how the sample is going to key track up and down, how it's going to repitch. And we're just going to work with Tone Machine here. If you own Contact, you can experiment with other options, but I'm going to go into Tone Machine. And now what happens when I play up the keyboard? I'm getting the same length of note. It's amazing. And we can even take this further. We can turn the speed way down. Suddenly now we're getting something kind of brassy. It's a little bit loud. Let's go down an octave. And let's just mess around with this format control. You know what? That might be something fun to mess around with using an LFO. Oh, look at this. It gives me the little orange dot at the top. I can right click this. I can go down to LFO. Let's create a sign. Okay. Now, if I want to find that modulator, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to click this little guy down here. So if I wanted to find the volume modulator, I would have clicked this, but now that we're working with the LFO, I'll go down and here it is. It's highlighted it with a little orange box around. And now we have a sign LFO that right now is working pretty much in free mode. But if I want to sync it, I can just double click down here, maybe single click actually, and I can choose then what I want. So let's go and put it here to 32nd. And I can start to pull that back a little bit. Now, if I don't want it going this full range, I do have to go up here and this is where I set the range right here. All right, just like that. It's really that simple. Okay, so one thing that we had in the Bitwig instrument was that it was monophonic. It was just one voice. We have a legato option here inside of the tone machine, but...
but it's not really doing what I want it to do. It's kind of doing some weird stuff there. It sounds cool, but I just want this to be a monophonic instrument. So to control that, it actually is very simple. You just have a voice maximum up here. And if I bring this down to one, perfect. It's really that simple. Why don't we add a filter into this mess as well? Okay. So since we're just working with one sample, it's only one group. Perfect. I can go and I can just add an effect right here and it's going to work. So I'm going to bring a low pass filter in and um, I don't really care what I bring in. We'll just go here. And now if I want to add an LFO or I want to add some kind of envelope to this, all I have to do is right click it again, choose envelope. Boom, I need to go to that envelope. There it is. I can see the movement there. It's actually too extreme. So Okay, that's pretty good. is only controlling the attack so Last thing we can try to add in, which is a little bit harder, is a bit of a glide to this. So if you think about it, glide is really just a pitch movement, okay? And so if I want to add glide in, I'm going to have to go up to the tuning control, and I'm going to have to go onto here, choose others, select glide, bring that up, and here I have a speed control. <laughs> But this is very hard to kind of get right because I need to go and I need to uh, find the glide option. Here it is. And this is going to set the distance. So by default, it's setting it to two semitones, so one tone. But I could take it up to 12. Or I could invert it, which would then be minus 12. I think I prefer it that way. And now I need to get the speed right. Let's go with the bass. 